I was born Nicholas Curry, son of a linguist I was brought up in Edinburgh, Athens and Montreal. Studied literature between 78 and 84. I moved to London under the name of Momus. what the world wants to see, fair enough. I had a girl right out, forgive me. I had a pretty head and sunny. I gobbled up her bowels all squidgy. I guzzled down her breasts and tummy. Don't call me cannibal Everybody needs from time to time To remember the fact that they're an animal To cross the line dividing clean from dirty I ate her like a plate of hot spaghetti I ate a girl right up, forgive me I don't know what to say or what came over me It wasn't just because I was A man dressed up as a lion in the Midsummer Night's Dream has to stop and tell the ladies in the audience that he's not a real lion. Even now, if you just sing about a crime, some people still want to call the police. Don't call me cannibal. Everybody needs from time to time to nibble someone's earlobes and their eyes as well. To scoop them out and swallow them like oysters from the shell. Hippopotamus was the fifth album by Momus. It was well received by most critics. Some nevertheless saw it as sexist. Betty Page of New Musical Express was one of those. I think the whole question of, you know, perversion as opposed to him being a sort of artistic agent provocateur is it's it's a very tricky one um i think it's it's tempting to make um, sweeping statements i don't consider myself a pervert i mean i i just think uh, i'm i'm showing uh, in in rather greater detail of x-ray my my sort of inner life i found it distasteful as a woman to listen to his lyrics so i i, I suppose then i did react to them as pornographic because i didn't want to share in his fantasy world i mean the point is that that I'm kind of, nothing is sacred in my records, okay? I'm kind of, I'm singing about sex with hippopotamuses and, and violence against hedgehogs and all sorts of things like that. And the, the only difference is that women have pressure groups, uh, hippopotamuses don't. I don't know. I, 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 I don't think I'd say he was a sexist. I, I think that he has a problem with women. I think he has an attitude towards women. And I don't think I, I approve of that attitude at times. Well, Serge Gansberg used to get asked if he hated women, and he would say, I hate all women except the one I'm sleeping with at, at any given time. And um, I, I, I just want to make it very clear that I don't hate women, that, that I, I especially love the women that I'm, that I'm sleeping with at the time, and I love the women I have slept with, and I stay friends with them and everything. But uh, at the same time, there, I'm aware of a kind of amorphous mass of women who are kind of uh, offended by what I do and what I say. and. Uh, I'm aware also that uh, things are getting increasingly difficult for, for people like me who are provocateurs. Uh, you know, I have concert problems, I have venues saying he's a sexist, he's, uh, he makes obscene records. So there is this gathering tide of uh, uh, people who have problems with what I do. If you, if you, um, if you put your fantasies into poems or, or lyrics or images, and then, you, uh, then it becomes, a third party becomes involved, then I think in a lot of cases that could be deemed pornographic in, the, in terms of the law, not just terms of morality and taste. I mean, I kind of feel I was quite lucky to, to meet Betty, uh, not that I've met her, um, she refuses to meet me, but uh, I feel I was lucky to be re reviewed by her because uh, I almost came across the last moralist in an amoral world. And I'm, I'm a moralist myself, you know, I'm, I'm asking for that kind of provocation. But that maybe that's just because I move in very narrow kind of artistic circles and I don't meet people who have strong convictions about moral issues. I think I'm a bit stronger as a woman to feel comprehensively insulted by Momus. Uh, I, th I, I would say I 
would feel slightly worried by some of the um, implications of his lyrics. I've been managing Momos for around a year and a half. I was a fan of the early stuff, things like Close to You, which I'd heard from Creation. And I uh, basically just wanted to manage him for such a long time, I chased him up and uh, eventually signed a contract. I first met Momus about four years ago and he was playing on the stage here in the Troubadour and he was doing an acoustic set um, and we became friends after that. And I'm different from the rest of his friends in the sense that I was never a fan of his. I do like his music very much but uh, I never wrote him a fan letter, never came to his house bearing flowers and I think in that sense we have a very ambivalent relationship because I can tell him the truth about himself. Um, the first time I met Momus he was a photograph in the New Musical Express and for some reason I thought he was devastatingly attractive. Um, since I was a pop journalist I was able to go and interview him with the sole intention of going to bed with him. Since he goes to bed with um, literally anybody who comes along once, as long as it's a woman, um, I succeeded. Uh, the, that was in about 1986. We're still friends today. I wouldn't say you can get a true picture of what Nick's like through his records. I think that's one side of him and a side that he thinks will provoke. Um, but on the whole, I'd say, as a person, he's basically quite shy, quite sensitive. Do I think of Momus as a pervert? Yes, I do. Um, but I think of him as he sings in his own song as a tender pervert. Um, in my opinion, I'd say he's a lot more normal than people think he is, although he is now starting to tick off the sex crimes that you can find on his albums. Um, I'd personally say he was fairly standard sexist and uh, he doesn't do the washing up. I don't think it's unusual that a woman should be managing an artist like Momus when he has been accused of being sexist, but I, I think that most songs are about sex or love or sex and love and Momus is just one of the an artist who does that, who sings about those things in a quiet and sometimes over-educated way. It's a way of living out his fantasies, uh, the whole pop star image, the fact that he does have fans, that he does have adoring girls knocking on the door of his dressing room and coming to his flat. Um, but it's it's the dream of every man to have um, to have adoring fans. The difference between Momus and Nicholas is that Momus is an out-and-out -out sex criminal, uh, whereas Nicholas is far too weedy ever to commit any sex crimes. You may make your confession now. I have in my conscience many sins of carnal lust, Holy Mother. Go on. I corrupted a young girl who came to me for guitar lessons. That's a grave sin. What else? I married a woman, and our marriage was a murder which lasted 45 years. I must warn you that your immortal soul is imperiled. What else? I had a girl right up. And do you repent these things? Are you sorry? I don't think so. <laughs> Pray for me. 